What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Autodesk Fusion 360 rendering tutorial for you. So in today's video, I want to walk you through some of the basics of creating renderings inside of Fusion 360. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we talked a little bit last week about applying physical materials to objects inside of Fusion 360. This week, I want to talk a little bit more about the appearance and also how that's going to affect your final rendering. And so to start off, I want to introduce you to the render rendering tab. So you can find that or the rendering workspace. So you can find that by clicking on this button right here and going down to render. And so when you click on the button for render, what that's going to do is that's going to take you into a different mode that has some different tools in here for the way things are going to look. And so at its base, rendering is basically taking light and applying it to materials and using an engine to calculate the way those materials are going to look in the real world. So you can see how right now, for example, all of these have kind of a metal with, uh, I think it's a plastic base, I'm not 100% sure on that, but they basically have a shiny metal. And if you look at these, you're actually seeing the reflections of light as well as shadows being cast inside of this uh, inside of this workspace. And so you can adjust the way that this works by adjusting your settings up above. So you can see how, just like we have in the other workspaces, we've got our menus in here with our different options. So to start off, let's adjust our scene settings a little bit, just so that we can take, it, take a look at the way that this is going to look inside of our renderings. So right now, for example, if we go into our scene settings, you have an environment that's setting the brightness of your scene. So the brighter your environment is, the brighter things are going to look. Notice that you get to a certain point where everything looks kind of washed out. So you don't want to go super heavy on something like this. Um, you want to stay kind of light. Then you've also got options in here for changing things like your background, which we'll talk a little bit more about in a minute, but you can adjust like the color of your background, other things like that, um, just by adjusting this slider in here. So I want to go back to kind of a grayish for right now. Um, you can also set if your ground plane is going to show up or not. So notice how in this situation, your ground plane isn't really affecting if you see a plane as much as it's affecting if shadows are being cast on the ground. So, and you can adjust a couple other things in here. I'm not going to focus too much on those for right now. You can also adjust things like your camera settings in here. And so one thing to note about the way that renderings work inside of a 3D program is the way that you see things is very similar to the way that a camera works in real life. So the way that the light is calculated is calculated very similarly to the way that a camera takes a picture. And what that means is that means you usually have different settings that kind of align with uh, different settings for cameras in the real world. So for example, if you look down in your camera settings, you can see how you have options in here for things like focal length. So if you adjust your focal length, that's going to affect how much light or what your field of view is entering into your camera. So the higher the value is, the more things are going to fit into your view, but sometimes you get some kind of weird distortion. So you have to be a little bit careful with this. So usually I end up setting my focal length probably in the um, it, it really depends. If I have kind of a tighter view, I usually set something in like the mid 40s or maybe the 50s. And then if I have something that's really wide, I usually end up in like the 90 range. But notice you could also set this to an orthographic view, which means that things aren't really in perspective mode anymore, meaning things don't go to a vanishing point. Um, so there's perspective and there's also orthographic mode down here. And then down below, you have options for your exposure settings. So exposure affects how much light makes it into your lens. So up above, we adjust the amount of light that's being shown onto your object. So you can kind of think of that like the sun shining. And then the exposure is how much light gets allowed into your camera view, and it's going to affect how bright things are there. So a higher value is going to have everything be brighter. A lower value is going to have everything be dimmer. So in a lot of the time, you'll end up using your exposure value in order to adjust your brightness in here. So you want to set your brightness up above to be as close to real world conditions as possible and then you can affect the brightness of your image by adjusting the exposure. So depth of field is going to be something we're not going to worry about too much right now but usually what that does is that affects uh, the focus 
on certain areas. And then aspect ratio, that's just going to be the ratio of the image that's created in here. So a lot of the time if you're creating a, um, a rendering, you don't necessarily want this to be this full view. You want to kind of limit it kind of like this. So you can see how um, you get these kind of dark bars in here. So these dark bars are basically showing you what's going to be in your actual rendering that you create depending on what you select. So you can also save all of these options. So those kind of have to do with the way your image is going to look. And then over here on the right, you've got a number of different environments over here in your library. And what the environments are going to do is basically what's happening is Fusion 360 is using an environment to simulate light sources in here. So you can see how these images look different. So each one of these images looks a little bit different and if you drag it up here you're going to notice that your reflections are going to change. Basically what this is doing is this is using an environment light in order to simulate light. And we can get more into that in a future video if you're interested. But just know that your environment settings are really going to affect the way that your image looks. And you can adjust these by dragging different environments. Um, into your current environment. And so now let's talk a little bit about creating our renderings. So there's two buttons in here to do this. So there's the in canvas render, and then there's the render button over here. So the in canvas render, this is basically going to render your image inside of your viewport right here. So this is a really quick render that you can use in order to create a really good result. So you can see how I can kind of rotate around in here. And uh, this is kind of updating dynamically as I go. And I feel like it gives you a really good result. So this is one way to create your rendering. So there are some settings you can adjust in here. I don't want to talk too much about them right now. Um, just note that if you go into your performance options and you click on advanced, this is going to take longer in order to generate your rendering, but it's probably going to give you better results. If you leave it on fast, at least in my experience, your result is going to be fine. So you can see how this is giving me a really good result without me having to do too much to it. So there's also a button over here for the actual render itself. And so if you render this, um, there's either the option to send this to a cloud rendering, meaning basically computers on Autodesk's network will render this. Note that this does require credits. So these are things that you have to buy. It's basically you buying computing time. But what this is going to do is this is going to really give you a lot of processing power if you have a more complex rendering. So, or there's an option over here for local renderer. And what that's going to do is that's going to render things out. That's basically going to render things locally on your computer and then it's going to save your result. And so we can focus a little bit more on this in the future. For right now, I want to focus on the in canvas render. And so what I'm going to do, and you can adjust like the size of the downloaded image, things like that. So alternatively, you can also just capture an image of the in canvas render, which to me gives you a really good result. And I think a lot of the time that's really going to be all that you need. And I think there's a limitation here on the size of your renderings that you can export. So that's probably why you'd want to jump up to the render option right here. I'm just going to save this to my computer and then I'm just going to click the save button. And so if I open that file up, you can see how I have an image basically with the resolution of my viewport on my computer. So this is a really easy way to quickly export renderings from Fusion 360. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn my in canvas render off for a second. And notice that when I turn my in canvas render off, I don't get the same reflections off of these objects that I did before. But let's talk just a bit, and we'll talk more about this in a future video. Let's talk just a bit about adjusting the appearance of these objects. So if you remember, last week we talked about um, inside of design mode, applying a physical material. So we just did a search and we looked for material. We clicked on physical material. You could also find that by going up to modify and physical material. Um, and that pops up a little window off to the side. The problem with that is applying the physical material to these objects makes them look different inside of this viewport, but it doesn't necessarily make it look different inside of your rendering. And so in order to adjust this, instead of applying a physical material, which is modifying the actual material properties of your object, what you want to do instead is you want to go into the modify function, click on the button for appearance. 
And so if you click on appearance, that's gonna pop up a window very similar to the one we had before where you can access your Fusion 360 material library and you can apply materials to objects. So for example, I could apply a fabric material to this object just by clicking and dragging it on here. And so let's apply a few different materials in here. So let's apply some different metals maybe in here, maybe some different coatings, or let's go with a plastic. Let's find a plastic material. So we can apply a white plastic material right here, maybe a glossy paint to this object. So you can see I'm just applying different materials in here just by finding these on this list and clicking and dragging them in here. So we could drag in like a granite for the base of a couple of these objects if we wanted to. So just to give us kind of an idea of what some of these materials can look like. So maybe a mahogany over here. You can see how applying these materials is really easy just by clicking and dragging them out of here. And in a future video, we'll talk about how to import custom materials as well. But now let's go back into render mode. Well, the first thing you're gonna notice inside of render mode is now these look different. Well, the reason they look different is because we've actually adjusted their appearance inside of Fusion 360. So we've applied a material to these. So now if you click on this, you can actually come in and you can uh, use the appearance function inside of your rendering as well. But now if we click on the button for in canvas render, you can see how these materials are all going to look different than they did before. So I think I need to adjust this mahogany material um, because it's too big on this face. But you can see how everything else is actually reflecting light. And everything looks really good other than this material right here. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to double click on this. We're going to adjust it so that the material is smaller. So you can see how just by clicking just by right clicking on this or double clicking on this material, you can adjust things like the scale of the map that's being applied in here. So you can see how this material is getting smaller as we do this. You can also adjust things like the roughness, which we can talk about more in a future video, but the lower your roughness, the more, um, the more light is going to bounce off of this. You probably want to turn your reflectance up as well. And there's more advanced things we can adjust as well. I don't want to talk too much about those right now, but let's go ahead and let's export a rendered image and then if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below and we can talk about them in a future video so we're just going to do the same thing maybe we'll adjust our maybe we'll adjust our scene settings so this has a little bit more brightness to it maybe turn up our exposure as well because this is a little bit dim it's not too bad but let's go ahead and turn our exposure up to maybe I think 8.6 is probably good. Maybe we'll turn it down to maybe like a 8.8 .8 for right now. So I wanna make sure that this is bright enough that you can actually see what's going on inside of your rendering. So we've adjusted our brightness up a little bit. Maybe we'll put that right on 1500 just for a round number. Um, and let's go ahead and let's export this. So what we wanna do is we just wanna take this image. We wanna go up and we wanna click on capture image We'll go ahead and do our current document window size for now. In a future video, we'll talk about how to export something bigger with the render option, but we're gonna click on OK. We're just going to set this to save to my computer. We'll go ahead and replace the image that we created before. And then if I open up that image, you can see I have this nice rendered image from inside of Fusion 360. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Um, rendering is kind of complicated. There's a lot of stuff to it. I have a whole channel dedicated just to rendering and different settings and different softwares for this. So um, for right now, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'd, happy, I'd be happy to try to answer them. We will get further into rendering um, in the future. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.